Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me on the Light Journal Podcast. I'm Jamie Perez. Today, I'll be discussing the idea of serving through reconciliation. This is the fifth episode of the Seven Levels of Service series. If you haven't already listened to earlier episodes, I urge you to do so. This week's episode, I would like to begin with a story, a true story. In 1952, Paul Alexander was a six-year-old boy when he was struck with polio. It paralyzed him from the neck down. He couldn't even breathe on his own. There weren't a lot of options back in the 1950s about how to keep him alive, but they did have a large mechanical contraption known as an iron lung. Without any other recourse, that's where he was placed. The machine would use air pressure to force oxygen in and out of his lungs. How do you suppose he reacted? I know that for most of us, we would have raged against God, society, fate, and he very well may have. The story didn't actually say. It's possible he coped with it by denying it, refusing to believe that this was his fate. He may have coped with avoidance, slipping into some sort of a fantasy world where everything was perfect. He could have reacted a million different ways, and he may have, initially. The article didn't address that. Instead, the article talked about his acceptance, about how he reconciled with his situation in life. He understood what his life was going to be if he stayed as he was. So he chose another path. Rather than wasting time and energy on bitterness, he gradually taught himself to breathe on his own. At first, it was only a few minutes at a time. But day after day, he increased the amount of time he could breathe without the iron lung doing it for him. After years of practice, he worked up to being outside that iron lung for most of the day. That meant he could go to school, and that's what he did. First, he got a bachelor's degree, and then he got a law degree. He even practiced law. Yes, he was still paralyzed from the neck down, but he accepted the challenge of making the most of his life as he was, where he was, when he was. Later in life, he had to spend more and more time in the iron lung, but he was known for his positive and inspiring attitude. His amazing life story is based on acceptance, and that should not be confused with resignation, but with seeing the truth of his situation and then acting on it. Reconciliation to his fate empowered him to find a path to joy despite and maybe because of his situation. So what does this story have to do with reconciliation, or more specifically, reconciliation with our higher self? Reconciliation is a big word, but it's a fairly simple concept. It means restoring trust, cooperation, and agreement between people, or in this case, between you and your higher self. When you look in a mirror, what do you see? Do you sigh when you see all your physical flaws and problem areas? Do you despair over your peculiarities and quirks? Do you wish you possessed different attributes? Do you lament over your hair or lack thereof? Do you wish you were taller or shorter, fatter or thinner, more muscular or sleeker? I want you to take a second look. This time, don't focus on your body. Stare into your eyes. Stare into the eyes that are reflecting back at you and don't look away. 10 seconds, 30, 1 minute, 2 minutes. What do you see now? This is a shamanic practice, and it helps you to see beyond your surface and into the soul beneath. The longer you look, the more faces you'll see superimposed over your own. These faces will have different genders, different ages, different races, different species. Sometimes you'll be clean-shaven and other times bearded. Sometimes you'll be smooth-skinned and other times pockmarked. Sometimes you'll be beautiful, other times not so much. And yet, they're all you. You, the soul, experiencing a multitude of incarnations in a multitude of forms. 
And in every one of those forms, the higher self experienced something unique to that time, that place, and that form. That soul, you, experienced challenges designed for specific learning to take place. That learning required specific sets of human characteristics, such as appearance, quirks, learning styles, races, species, and genders, amongst other things. And they had to be combined in distinctive ways, ways that created a life story worth experiencing and retelling, just like the story of Paul Alexander. Just like him, you are as you are because you are perfectly designed for your unique life situation and challenges. In subtle and not so subtle ways, our family, societies, religions, media, and government, amongst others, are constantly telling us we are not good enough, smart enough, talented enough, blessed enough, deserving enough, or lucky enough for this, that, or the other. We are graded and compared with others, starting with the doctors who birth us, immediately comparing our weight, size, and appearance with what is considered normal, to the schools that we spend the next 12 or more years in. We are compared and graded with preconceived ideas of what constitutes learning, and then we're tested to ensure everyone at the same age understands the same things in the same way. Human society seems determined to either make us into clones of some arbitrary standard of normal or make us believe we're flawed. But I'm here to tell you that you, the soul, encased in a perfectly designed, imperfect body, are exactly what and how you are meant to be. Regardless of how society labels you, regardless of how society treats you, you have come here to be what you are. You have come here to experience all the complexities of being uniquely you. This is where reconciliation with higher self starts, but it isn't where it ends. If you recall, reconciliation does not mean resignation. It means restoring trust, cooperation, and agreement between you and your higher self by accepting your life experiences as specifically designed for you. So in practical terms, what does that mean? Well, to trust, cooperate, and agree with your higher self implies learning the lessons intended and moving forward. Like Paul Alexander, it means not wallowing in the unfairness of your life situation, but discovering how far you can go with it, how much more you can achieve having these seeming limitations. As I discussed in the last episode, aligning to your higher self is the first type of service that we offer our intuitive or consciousness sheath. Reconciling to your higher self is the second type of service we offer to this layer of consciousness. It's about trusting and cooperating with your higher self in learning what you came here to learn. It's about learning to love and appreciate your body, your mind, and your higher self exactly as they, as you, are. Trusting our higher self is easy during the uncomplicated and happy times, but it can be challenging when difficulties and suffering occur. And yet, If we want to experience the highest state of human existence, the bliss body, we have to learn to accept that we're not here by chance. We chose to come. We wanted this life experience. Not only wanted it, but we designed it for ourselves. That can be a hard truth to accept, especially when we're suffering. It is far easier to wallow in the pain or see our life as a series of mistakes rather than to see it as a choice our choice. Now, regardless of how we choose to respond to our life experiences, our soul will learn something from it. But when we choose to cooperate with our higher self, our attitude will change our experience of it. It will change our quantum field. We'll begin drawing positivity toward ourself. Like Paul Alexander, we will find joy where we are as we are. The experience of suffering will change because we are changing. What can be healed will be healed. What can be transformed will be transformed. And whatever remains will be reseen and renown from the perspective of our higher self. As you begin aligning and collaborating with your higher self, 
your life will begin to change. Your energy will begin to shift to a higher frequency where suffering is no longer necessary for learning. As you change, so does your perception of the world and your experience in it. You will begin to learn through blessings, abundance, and intuition. In other words, as you change, so does your reality. One way to re-experience reality is through living in the present moment, in the now. This is where we experience pure joy, uncorrupted by regrets from the past or worries about the future. In the moment, that's where we can experience deeper levels of alignment and collaboration with our higher self. Through the seven levels of service, we come to understand that everything is interconnected. Everything is divine. There is no sacred and profane. All is divine, including you, from your body, to your mind, to your psyche, to your soul. You are divine. And it is within the present moment that you grow ever more conscious of the divinity within. In the next episode, I'll explore what happens when we begin the sixth layer of service, which is simply being. Thanks for listening. I'm Jamie Perez with the Light Journal Podcast. Blessings on your journey.